Hello, everyone. Welcome to Microsoft Build 2020. Um, this session today is a part of our student zone community area section. Um, you know, we've you know, our team has gotten together. We've created a lot of great content for not only professional developers, but also students too that are really interested in learning about, you know, all the different tools and technologies that we build here at Microsoft. Uh, before we begin, I do want to mention our code of conduct. Um, you know, we're going to show it really quickly here on the screen. I don't expect you all to read all of this, but please do keep in mind that, you know, we expect everyone to be on their best behavior as we go through these sessions. Now, what I want to do is introduce to you my friend and my coworker, Jasmine, and Jasmine's going to talk to you about uh, Chatbox. So take it away, Jasmine. All right, thank you, Cecil. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Student Zone. In this session, we'll be talking about Chatbots, as Cecil mentioned. I'm Jasmine Greenaway. I am a cloud advocate at Microsoft coming, from you, coming to you all the way from Brooklyn and New York City. So let's get started. So first, we're going to talk about what exactly a bot is. And at its most basic, for the most basic definition, a bot is an application that is set to do a certain task. So you might be wondering what the difference between a bot versus a regular application or app on your phone is. Well, the thing with a bot is, is that you don't need, once you have it set up, you don't need to have any external um, external communication or external interaction with it um, it's it's automated so you know when you think about using a regular app you have to press a button with a bot it kind of knows what what's what to do on its own so normally but um, normally just like any other application a bot is going to need to communicate with your device so whether that's a computer or a or your phone is going to communicate through ones and zeros which we know as binary and and that output will be what we see or that uh, on the screen or that task that we're looking to accomplish. So that could be something as simple as an alarm. It could be maybe answering a question or it could be something even, even a little bit more advanced like getting some data from a graph or a chart. Now let's take a little history lesson on bots. So in the past, bots had a little bit of a notorious reputation. Um, you've probably seen this, this um, image here um, called a reCAPTCHA, where you know you probably usually see this when you are signing up for a new account or you are um, logging in to something. Maybe if you've forgotten you know, your, your password um, and after a few retries, it, it, this shows up. Well, this was, um, this was implemented to protect folks from from bots specifically folks who are maintaining these sites maintaining these users because you know you don't want a bunch of you know just empty you know uh, uh users made by a bot that uh, and these are accounts that are never going to be used so so um that's a uh, that's one protection against bots that we've seen but in the past we've also even had help helpful bots so if um, you have ever used Microsoft Word, you've probably heard, at least heard about Clippy. Clippy, you don't see Clippy in these versions or the newer versions of Word, but in the past, Clippy was a bot because, because Clippy was there to help you with specific tasks based on what you were doing in your document. So in this exa example here, um, this could be essentially um, uh, Clippy will usually ask us after you've had, you know, your um, your document. Maybe it's an essay that you're writing, sitting around for a while, and and Clippy's going to ask you if you want to save it. And if you press press yes, then it then it would save it for you. And the final bot that I am very um, I that's a uh, bot that's close to my heart is um, from AOL, um, American America Online. So this was back in the day when. Um, you know, we we all were using dial up internet and AOL Instant Messenger. Um, AOL um, had the Instant Messenger and one of their bots was Smarter Child. And this was a text based chat bot um, where you could um, ask questions, say pretty much converse with this bot um, and ask whatever you want. So those are um, some uh, three um, just examples of bots in the wild. Now. As I mentioned before, bots are there to 
help you with a specific task. And you're probably wondering why would I want one? What, what's so great about a bot? Well, let's think about um, uh, a very basic example here. So th say that your mom on the left there sees that you have a very, very, very messy room. It's really, really bad. And she's like, I need you to clean this room, please. This, this is unacceptable. And you are like, wow, I hate cleaning. I hate cleaning my room. I wish I had a robot to do this for me. Well, imagine that you had one. And it was like, well, I love cleaning. Imagine having a robot for you so that you can save time playing video games, playing Animal Crossing, whatever you might be doing um, uh, programming. Um, so, so because this bot is uh, saving you time. So bots are helpful. They save you time and um, they are and, and they're helpful in some in some cases. So specifically, let's talk about chatbots. The difference between um, what what uh, defines a chatbot is pretty much a bot that's that will help you based on what you the way you're communicating. So usually this is voice or text. So in this um, example here, what we're looking at is somebody maybe sending a message to um, a chat message, a chat window where a bot is there to ask, uh, how might I help you? And usually in some cases, we don't even know that it's a bot that, that we're chatting with, but in the end, they can be helpful as well. So there are quite a few parts of the chatbot, but two parts I really want to focus on is this knowledge base and the code, which a bot doesn't always necessarily need code, but sometimes um, it's 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 a necessity. So let's talk specifically about this knowledge base. The knowledge base is going to be um, all the information that the bot needs to do its job. So these are um, the questions that the user might ask. This might be um, maybe uh, some external connections that it, it might need. So um, so this is where um, anything this, like I said before, this is where um, the bot knows what to do. And the code uh, helps with with that as well. So let's take a so let's actually replace that image of a bot with what the bot would actually look like. So what we're looking at on the left here now, again, still has the knowledge base, still has that code sometimes, but now what we we're really seeing is the real representation representation of the bot. It it's just usually a chat window that you can text um, or or type in or um, or chat via voice. <clears throat> okay, so with all this to say, there is a a service in on uh, uh, Microsoft that Microsoft provides called the Bot Framework. And this is a huge platform. And what this platform allows you to do is that you can create a bot from scratch, you can test it, and you can share your bot in the world uh, through to, to the world through many of these um, mediums called channels. So a channel would be um, where your bot would be communicated with. So for example, you can use Skype, Facebook Messenger, even email, Slack, Teams if you like. And then um, you also have a bunch of different options for um, for devices. And um, also you can use additional services um, such as the cognitive services, such as speech, um, vision, language understanding, and, and, and the like. So uh, the bot framework uh, is a really, really cool way to um, get your bot, your uh, get started on your bot. And we're gonna see an example of this a little later. But now I wanna move on to a little bit more detail around what a bot can actually do. So, you know, normally when, you know, when you ask somebody a question, say, oh, or say, uh, greet somebody, you say, hello, how are you? Normally the answer that you're expecting is, oh, I'm good, or, or I'm not doing very well, and how are you? Well, imagine that a computer could do that. Imagine if a computer asked you, how are you, and you were expecting, and it was expecting you to uh, to uh, to reply, um, I'm good or I'm bad, and how are you? So that is just a you know normal conversation flow, and the person in the middle with that with that laptop is going to be the scientist. So normally this is it could be a data scientist, it could be um, an AI scientist or a machine learning scientist who mimics or 
tries to emulate this natural conversation. And this term is called natural language processing. We, this is how we teach computers and our bots to communicate so that we can understand each other and have a normal conversation. And this is really, really important when we are thinking about um, different languages. So yes, my natural language is in English, but in Spanish, the context might be, uh, might be a little different. So again, that scientist has to be able to, to be able to mimic or um, imitate or even uh, simulate that normal conversation flow, no matter what language it is. Now let's take a look at this with our bot. So, so with natural language, language processing, it makes it easy for um, a bot to be able to take a look at exactly what the problem is and what the user needs. So in this example here, I'm asking for this person asking help with order number one, two, three, and the user would, and the, the customer service representative on the left side here would say, okay, please wait a moment. I'm gonna look up order one, two, three. And on the right side here, the same user is asking or, uh, help with a specific order, but now the bot that might be on this their desktop is asking, okay, let me look up order number one, two, one, two, three. So there's some specific keywords that our that our bot knows that it it that um that the user needs help. So for example, the user said they need help. So the computer knows that it's going to need it needs that this person needs assistance. And then the next keyword I can we could probably point out here is order. So this person needs help with an order and they need help with an order one, two, three. So the computer has, or the spot has three things that um, this person, this, this user has to find that they need help with. So specifically this order. So now the computer, so the, so the person who has created the spot could probably use, uh, use this information to go look up order one, two, three, and then their chat window, maybe they have these order details. So there's also another service called um, Lewis, uh, also that stands for language understanding, that helps bots with natural language. So um, in this example, um, this person asked for asked, asked for HR rep, and Lewis sees that it's that the intent is that they want to contact somebody from HR, and so the bot responds with that rep's name, their email, and their phone number. So. With, on that note, let's take a look at a chatbot in action. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to swap to the bot framework emulator. And what the bot framework emulator is, is a, um, is a way for you to test your bot locally before you deploy it to the cloud. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna start, I have a bot that I created with, with the bot framework. I created it in Node and I actually already have it running and so what I'm going to do now is connect to it through the emulator and click connect. Now, when the spot gets started, it's going to ask me two things. So it's going to, it says hello, gives me a nice welcome, and now it's asking me for my name. So it's going to ask me for my name and um, a message that I want to send to, uh, to my bot. Now, when I answer my bot, with the with these prompts, what's going to happen is it going is going to go to um, a a logic app. It's going to connect to my logic app here. So um, in in Azure, uh, a logic app is a way for you to do um, event driven event driven uh, coding with a really cool interface that an editor that looks like this. So what I'm doing is having my bot communicate with my logic app through something that we call um, an HTTP um, uh, verb. And this is, and this verb is a post, which means that I am sending information to this logic app so that this logic app can consume my, the user and the, um, the user, or the name and the information and the, uh, the message. And then um, what will happen next here is that it, I get, I, I sent that message and that, that message from the bot to the to a queue, and so um, 
a queue is just a way for me to save all my messages in the order that they're received. So the final part of this is, is that I actually have a little um, Chrome or not Chrome uh, edge extension here in the browser here, a browser extension here that will read the bot messages in here. Notice that I have no messages yet because there's nothing in my queue yet. So that's pretty much what this bot's going to do. This, I'm going to answer my the bot's questions. It's going to come to my logic app here, and then it's going to put it in the queue. And then when there's messages in my queue, I'm going to see it in my extension here. OK, so let's do this. So I'm going to say my name is Jasmine. And then what is my message? I'm going to say hello, student zone 2020. Okay, hey, and then it's going to say hello th or thank you for this message. Hello, student zone 2020. And if I look back at my logic app, I'm actually going to go back here and just refresh it. I should see a green check mark show up down here. Yep, saying that I that my um, logic app succeeded. So that means that my message got sent to the queue. So if I open this up, I should see my message. I don't see a message yet, so let me just refresh this a few times. Might take a second to show up. Let's see here. Let's double check and see if my message made it into my queue here. Yep, I made it into my queue. Yep, and there's my, my message in my queue, but looks like it's not showing up in my extension. Might take a second, might be the, the internet connection. But that's that's all right. Maybe we'll check we'll check it later during Q and A. Okay. But that's uh, essentially the gist of uh, the a bot. So you can so in that example, I didn't really have Lewis. I wasn't really using Lewis. It was a simple it was a simple bot. But if I wanted to add Lewis, it'd be super easy because Lewis and uh, the bot framework work really well together. So if you are interested in the demo that I created, um, you can, or any more information about chatbots, you can visit this link down here. And um, yeah, I think it's time for uh, to open it up to any questions. All right, thank you, Jasmine, that was great. So we do have tons of questions in here. <gasps> really? Um, so I hope you're ready, man. This is, this is gonna be uh, <laughs> a lot. All right. OK, so um, I'll scroll up a little bit because I did see some interesting ones that I wanted to forward to you. I'm going to check uh, out the browser here, too, while sure. uh, I'm answering questions. Sure. So first question I want to ask you is from Angela and Angela mm -hmm. asks, can bots be made with to you Microsoft bot framework to use Discord? Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, so it might have not been in that um, in in that diagram, but if but it might be available when you take a look um, when you're setting up your bot. If not, um, there are always ways to connect your bot to um, to a, a different chat. Uh, excuse me, a different chat medium. So it might be it might be a little work if it's not there already. Um, if it's not uh, it's not one of the channels that you can use already but um, it, it should be possible. Yeah, and I know we also got a lot of questions about just different channels that we could use. Uh, mm -hmm. There's some folks that were asking about Twitter and Twitch and some of these other things. So mm -hmm. is, it, is it fair to say as long as that platform supports bots of some sort that you could integrate bot framework one way or the other? Yes. yes, you could even like just have a simple bot like show up on, um, on the browser. Um, there's like a little, um, so uh, one of the channels is called web chat and pretty much you would uh, essentially take a script. Uh, it gives you a little JavaScript file or, or sorry, a little um, HTML slash JavaScript thing and you just paste that into your HTML file and you're ready to go. Um, it add, you, you have to do a little bit more, a uh, little bit more security stuff um, or security measures with it, but it's that's possible. There's many, many uh, channels for you to use. All right, and so here's another interesting one. Uh, question is, is it possible to run the chatbot technologies mentioned here on premises? If yes, what are the requirements? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I would say, I would say yes, only because I have, I'm running this locally on my computer. 
I, you know, I just used an emulator. This wasn't um, deployed to the cloud. Um, and the way that I communicate with my um, with my logic app, unfortunately, uh, I'm not sure what happened to my extension here, um, but it didn't show up in there. But um, but yes, so so my theory is yes because um, in um, in you, we didn't look at the code, but in my JavaScript. I um, did that post request to be able to communicate with my logic app. So I my my theory is that yes, you should be able to use this on premises. Okay. Uh, and speaking of logic apps, we do have a couple of questions about the logic app. The oh. first one is, where does the logic app come from? Does it replace an HTTP function or code that you write? Um. Uh. I wouldn't say essentially it replaces code because you kind of still have to think programmatically when you're using a logic app because first you have to think about you know what um how do you want your logic app to start like what are in and, and, and uh, this is part of a technology called serverless or event driven um event driven code so um so with a tr with something called a trigger we need to find out what what will make the logic app run and or start and so here in my example here, I'm using this HTTP endpoint, but you could use things such as, um, you know, even like getting a Twitter, Twitter notification. Um, there's a bunch of different triggers, but what I really, really love about Logic Apps is that um, it's very, it's very fast for me to uh, get set up. Um, I could have easily done this with an Azure function, which is also part of Azure's um, serverless offerings. But um, with Logic Apps, it's just, I, I really love it because it's just easy for me to just get going and get that set up uh, faster than um, an Azure function. So, I mean, I could have used Azure function. It's just really up to, up to you. Okay, great. And another question coming to you says, mm -hmm. what were you using to process the queue messages? What was I using to process the queue messages? Oh, okay. Yes. So um, the the service that I used was um, the Azure Storage um, service, and in under that is um, the one one of the services under that is the queue. So you need to create an Azure Storage account to be able to use uh, a queue. And so um, on the other side of that, so um, is uh, the the SDK that I used. Um, I actually did not use an SDK. I actually used a um, uh, a uh, a REST the REST service or the REST um, API that's available um, to uh, to be able to access my queue. So um, what should show up in my in here is that the message here. And so um, with uh, with uh, the extension um, with this uh, extension that I have here. Um, it's a simple, like, small little HTML and uh, JavaScript uh, extension that I should be able to just uh, get the for the last message that was on that queue. So, um, so yeah, I'm just using the 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 um, the Azure Storage account to to access to uh, set up my queue. Hope that answers your question. Okay, and then uh, another question: Can mm -hmm. you use this kind of bot in a video game? Ooh, I I would suspect you could because um you can because also you can run it locally. Um, you know, when I first was uh building my bot, I actually um was, you know, doing everything on on, on my computer. Um and I think that yeah, I, I wouldn't see why you wouldn't be able to use it use it um because you know the bot framework is, you know, it's a set of um tools. Um, and, and including the emulator that you can, you know, you can t you can test locally with, and and you know, using it locally does not only essentially mean testing. So I would assume that you could use it in a video game. Okay, so we have a few questions about like learning and just getting started in general. Yeah. Uh, first, first one: How much knowledge do you need to actually start creating a chatbot? Mm. So with the bot framework, um, I would say. I would say maybe some minimal to intermediate um, knowledge of either JavaScript, Python, or C Sharp, because um, you're going to need to be able to use the SDKs uh, to be able to create your, your bots. Um, but in the, the resources that I provided in this slide here, 
Um, you can find um, you can find my demo that I wrote in um, in JavaScript. Um, but um, like I said before, um, and I also have um, more resources for um, different um, samples behind that link. But um, I would say I would say either JavaScript having some basic knowledge of JavaScript, Python, or C sharp will get you uh, will get you will get you a little bit further ahead. There's also a tool called the Bot Framework composer where it's just very similar to what that logic app interface looked like where you can drag and drop um your um how you want your bot to communicate and what you want your bot to do um that's kind of a, a newer a newer tool but definitely check it out if you um, are new to coding and but also want to check out uh chatbots okay and another question from arthur arthur is asking how to load and get a database of knowledge of the bots how can answers of all questions? Hold on. So how can we get answers of all questions we're interested in? Should we make a model for our chatbot? So it kind of sounds like you'd you'd want to train the model, right? Like I don't think there's necessarily a database, but there's probably be like a kind of stuff that you yes. feed and train the bot, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So um, so with this, this is where Lewis comes in because this is what is really important. So you know. You know, one part is how what you're saying, but also the intent. So, you know, um, you know, in the example where I talked about um, somebody asking help help with order number one, two, three, Lewis would, would be the tool that would come in there and say, okay, this person needs help with this um, specific um, the specific order. And remember that the other part of chatbots is that they are set or they are created to do a, a very specific tasks. So. You know, if you have a bot that's maybe doing like a bunch of things, um, very similar. Um, you know, this is a concept that we learned in. Um, I remember learning in um, in college about coding. Um, you know, if you have too much logic, if you have too much logic in one thing, then you know that just opens up the potential for um, for a lots of errors, and you know, um, makes it harder for you to debug or fix if something goes wrong. So you know, you want to make sure that your bots. Um, are to the point. And if you have too much stuff into this bot, maybe you need a separate bot that does um, this other specific task, or you need to um, build a little bit more context with uh, Lewis or even in your the code of your bot. So it really is, it depends on what exactly the task that you're trying to accomplish. All right, and so we have a few minutes left. Um, still tons of questions coming in. But I oh, didn't really? want to switch for a second because there are some questions that aren't necessarily bot framework related that I kind of think you might be interested in answering. OK, uh, so one question is, so what exactly it is that you do in your role? Oh, what is it that I exactly do in my role? OK, oh, this is this is a fun one. Um, this is actually really one of the reasons why I really like, um, you know, this role is that you know, we get to connect with folks like you all over the world and show you all the cool things that you can do in the cloud. Um, you know, we all have our, you know, our our many different strengths. And one of my favorite things is demos. So, um, you know, this so that extension that I I built that unfortunately didn't work. Um, I uh, I like used Microsoft Docs to like learn how to build that, and it was you know pretty straightforward. So that's actually really one of my favorite things. But you know part of you know part of what we do is just connecting with folks and you know showing them how to use the cloud. You know so you know my typical day is you know answering emails from you know folks um, you know community members and you know communicating with folks on Twitter, um, pushing a few things to um, repos on GitHub. And you know, putting together presentations like this, and also like looking at different Azure services that you know are around. You know, I kind of just stumbled on the bot framework and was really into it, and and that's and that's what brought me here. <laughs> speaking about it today. All right, great. And then the last question, because we're like at the last minute right now. Last question: yeah. <laughs> What does a typical day at work look like for you? Oh, okay. So yeah, um, like I mentioned before, it's you know. Chatting with community members, I you know talking with team members, um, and also you know uh, just also planning my day, having at least like setting like three goals that I want to get through the day. So it's normally like preparing a presentation, um, maybe looking at um, maybe reading some docs, reading more about um, a specific Azure service, 
and then also and, and um, communicating with the community. Um, so so yeah, so coding, communicating, and and planning. All right, great. And so so we're gonna stop right now. Thank you, Jasmine, so much for that session. Uh, I Thank think you, you have a few more slides at the end too that you wanted to mm -hmm. just talk about real quick. Yeah, sure. So um, if you have any, if you um, could please fill out this short survey about um, the session, you know, it really, you know, you know, one thing that we always love to do here is, you know, you know, make sure that we are taking in feedback, taking feedback seriously and, um, you know, coming, coming back to you with, you know, in with a new improved versions of what we're doing um, based on what you're telling us. So please check it out. And then on um, the rest of these links are all um, all resources that you should check out. You know the fun doesn't stop after the talk, so please check out these um, these resources. And um, also that first link there, the aka.ms students at build link, also has um, resources to what we covered in this session today. And that's it. All right, thank you everyone. Have a good day, and uh, make sure you check out the rest of our sessions at Microsoft Build.